Were Jesus and Muhammad spiritually brothers? I've looked at some of the uh, authentic Muslim sources and what I consider to be the authentic Christian sources and I've come to the conclusion that they actually were spiritual brothers, by which I mean that they shared the same vocation, they both came from the same source, they were sent by God himself and this comes out in the teaching, the authentic teaching. I just want to give you just two examples, uh, one from the New Testament and another from authentic Hadith. There's a lovely uh, parable told uh, in Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read for a change from the NIV study Bible. Uh, there's a parable of the lost sheep. I'm just going to read it to you. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered. They weren't, they weren't happy. This man, this man Jesus, welcomes sinners and he eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Extraordinary story. Very well known parable. And this particular chapter has the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son, uh, which is even more famous and basically tells the same message. And I'll come back to this uh gospel this particular parable in a second but i just want to read to you from an islamic source uh, this little booklet here um, a selection of authentic hadith qudsi uh, these are kind of sacred hadiths and this one i'm going to read to you uh, is found in the collection of bukhari and muslim and it's headed in here warning those who despair of allah's mercy it was reported that the messenger of God, upon whom be peace, said, Among the children of Israel, there was a man who killed 99 persons. So we're still with the people of Israel. Jesus was speaking to them about them. This is a, a story about a man from the same people who had killed 99 people. After that, he went out to ask whether he had any chance of repentance. So something was drawing him back to God. Is there any way after all these all these murders, I can receive forgiveness from God if I repent? Is this possible? Thus, he went out and he met a monk and said to him, is there any chance for me to show repentance? Is there any hope for me? If I repent of my sins, is God going to look uh, on me mercifully or not the monk answered in the negative he said basically no chance mate you're not going to get forgiven and so the, he killed him the man who had killed 99 had now killed 100 what's one more there's no forgiveness might as well just kill this guy he kept on inquiring though according to this hadith so there's something still within him, drawing him on, drawing him to seek God's mercy. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And a man he came across said to him, go to such and such a village. Why would he say that? Well, clearly there's a man, at this, uh, there's someone in this village. He's got to go there. He's got to meet this person who can advise him and give him hope, actually, that uh, forgiveness was possible. So go to such and such a village, he, he counselled him. But he died, he passed away before he got there. He was en route, but he died. But it says here, his chest pointed towards it. So it is clear that he, was, he still was seeking forgiveness and reconciliation and mercy from God. But he died before he got there. Then a dispute arose between the angels of mercy and the angels, angels of punishment concerning him. 
Thereupon Allah ordered the land on one side to become nearer and the land on the other side to go farther away. Then he said to the angels, measure the distance between them. They found that it was nearer to this land of repentance by just a hand span. And so he was forgiven. So in fact, it was judged that he was actually just closer to the town that he was forgiving than he was from the place, uh, the bad place that he left. And so God forgave him. Wow. So God forgave a man who had murdered or killed 99 plus one people. Such is the mercy of God. It's an astonishing mercy of God. So he is the, the lost sheep uh, in this parable. Um, clearly not one of the righteous, someone who had done, who was a sinner, basically, a bad person. And in this story, it's it really is an extremely evil person. But even he, according to Islam, um, can receive forgiveness if he simply, re well, not simply, if he repents, and that's a huge thing to do, turns around, in his case, literally, physically, going to a, vi going to, a village to seek confirmation of that forgiveness and, and uh, words of hope, words of invitation. And God still forgave him. So what's the final thing I can say about this? People might say, and people have said, because I've said this before, <clears throat> of course, is that, well, if you look at the New Testament, you've got to put that gospel in context because Jesus died for the sins of the world. He died in our place. He was a sin offering. He led to our reconciliation, the at one -ment, atonement with God. But it doesn't really work like that because if you look at this gospel, the gospel of Luke, if you look at all the teaching in Luke concerning salvation, forgiveness, mercy, sin, what, um, how we're reconciled with God, we find a consistent theme. What is this theme? Well, I turn to a scholar to clarify this. This is a very good book, The New Testament, A Historical Introduction to the Christian Early Christian Writings. Uh, this is the fifth edition, but there are several more since then by Professor Bart D. Ehrman. And um, if you really want a good fairly advanced introduction to the whole of the New Testament from a top scholar who's giving very mainstream academic views. This is the best. Uh, the, by best, I mean it's the most readable, most accessible. It's got uh, lots of uh, interesting pictures in it and so on. It's very user friendly. So what does he say about this? What does he say about the Gospel of Luke? And I just want to read to you what he says, because it really gets to the heart of the matter and why I say that Muhammad and Jesus were spiritual brothers, in fact. And he says on page uh, 148, and he's talking about um, the Gospel of Luke and what G how Jesus is portrayed in Luke. What was he doing? What is his vocation? He says, that the salvation that Jesus preaches in Luke is similar to the salvation preached by the prophets of the Hebrew scriptures. So his ministry, his, his whole uh, way of speaking about salvation is similar to the Jewish prophets. No surprises there, perhaps. The people of God need to repent of their sins and turn and return to God. When they do so, he will forgive them and grant them salvation. For Luke, the biggest sin of all was killing God's prophet, this is Jesus, as we shall see in our study of Acts, he says. And in Acts, he says, when people realised what they had done in this grotesque miscarriage of justice, they are driven to their knees in repentance. And when they turn to God in recognition of their guilt, he responds by forgiving their sins. Thus, for Luke, what brings about a right relationship with God is not Jesus' death, per se, but the repentance that his death prompts. Now, why is, how is this relevant? Well, what it shows us that uh, in contrast, in contrast with, say, Paul and his uh, letters or Mark or Matthew, the other Gospels, for Luke, Jesus is not a sacrifice for sin. His death has nothing to do with reconciling people to God unless it prompts people to uh, you know, realize their, their sin and turn directly to God. But it's their repentance directly to Allah which causes their salvation. 
they don't go through this atoning sacrifice so that's something that luke rejects now that's a strong word why do i say that luke rejects that because luke uses mark and this is very this is the, the, the standard understanding in academia mark basically gobbles up sorry luke gobbles up the whole of mark um and he edits it and changes it and he deletes key verses and you can do that by comparing them paragraph paragraph column by column the same chapter in mark the same chapter in luke in mark's version of the story chapter 10 for example we have jesus saying that his death was a ransom for the son of man came to die as a ransom for sin this very verse in mark is deleted omitted by luke in his retelling of the same story and there are other examples like that that i could mention i'm not going to go into that here so for luke he understands jesus death uh, sorry understands forgiveness of sins just like the jewish prophets did and just like muhammad did according to the hadith there is no need to go through some kind of human sacrifice. You don't need a Messiah to die for you. You don't need Muhammad to die for you. You don't need Jeremiah or Moses or Elijah, Hosea and so on, the prophets to die for you. None of them said that. They all, Jewish prophets, Muhammad, an Arab prophet, all agreed that you can go directly to God and seek repentance for sin. And God, because of his character, his attributes, what is this? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim in the Quran. He is the most compassionate, the most merciful. He he can forgive directly, and he does give forgive directly. You don't need to go through the the, the bloody sacrifice of a human being, which anyway, according to the Jewish scriptures, is condemned as an abomination. So I conclude, uh, as Bart Ehrman doesn't mention Muhammad, of course, but the way he speaks of, um, understands Luke's own uh, views about Jesus is pretty much what uh, we read in the Hadith of Muhammad. So I do conclude that Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them both, were spiritual brothers at the deepest level. One was sent to the Jews, I am only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he is recorded as saying in the Gospel of Matthew. Muhammad, though, according to Islam, said he was sent as a mercy to the whole of mankind. And the messages are confirming each other. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found it interesting. Till next time.